Good morning, everybody. Um, I've been asked to put together an assembly, so I have done that, um, to try and uh, address the concerns and the worries that you might have at this very odd time. So as you can see from the first slide, I've tried to, um, I'm going to try and talk to you about what on earth is going on in the world at the moment, okay? So there's no doubt that we are living through um, very, very odd times at the moment, and lots of us are finding those times very difficult. Um, they are hard times, you know, but they will pass, as the little hand symbol says at the top of this picture. You know, we can't be in school together at the moment, and we can't go out and do the things that we would normally want to do with our friends, go out and eat, go to the movies, just playing outside with each other at the moment is just a dangerous thing to do. We can feel, therefore, very isolated and very lonely, and some of us will be deeply concerned about the health of our families and friends, because... Um, you know, there will be people that we know and that we love who are unwell at the moment um, and who are finding this time very, very difficult. So we've got to stick together. We've got to try and get through it together. And we have got to keep our eyes on the fact that things will get better. Why are we behaving the way we are at the moment is a very good question. Why do we have to be in lockdown? None of you will be um, unaware of the situation that's going out in the wider world at the moment. And it's not just in this country, although we are suffering pretty badly from the situation. The reason that we're in this lockdown at the moment is because there are people that we need to protect. We need to protect ourselves first and foremost. I know that sounds very selfish, but it's true. You have to look after yourself. We've got to look after our families and the elderly in our community because they are particularly vulnerable. Um, people with underlying health conditions, people um, over certain ages are suffering more deeply from COVID-19. And we've got to behave in the way that we're being asked to behave in order to protect them, to make sure that when we get through this, they are still with us and they are still part of our family and our friendship group and our communities. We may not even know the people that we're protecting, but we still have a responsibility to protect them. And the other group of people that we are having to protect right now are those who are helping us get through this situation. So yes, the NHS staff obviously are very much in the front line and they are the ones that are helping enormously to get us through this. But there are other people as well that we need to protect. We need to protect the people in the community who are trying to make sure that normal society can function. So the police, the ambulance service, people working in supermarkets, the supply chain for supermarkets. All of these people are really important to us and we have a duty to protect them from the disease. How can we do that? Well, there are lots of ways and none of these will come as any surprise to you. So the first thing I would ask you and urge you to do is to follow the rules that have been set out. They are now legal requirements because this went through Parliament yesterday and became law. So stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. OK, that is the basic message. That's what we're being asked to do. Stay at home. Don't go out unless you absolutely have to. You are only supposed to be leaving your house for certain reasons. And those are to collect food or to collect medicines. And that's about it. You shouldn't be going out to meet up with people to just have a laugh or a bit of fun. You can go out and take exercise and you can um, take pets and things, dogs out for walks. That's absolutely fine. But apart from that, you should be staying at home. Having said that, there is absolutely no reason why you can't keep contact with people. You can keep contact with your friends and you know how to do this. You don't need me to explain it to you in thousands of different ways. And I would urge you to keep that contact going. I would also ask you to keep contact with the people in school. We are in school, some staff all the time, and every other member of staff is available to you 
um, at home via the internet, email us if you need us. Okay, we are here. We are still here to help you and to look after you as best we can from a distance. But if you need us, just please let us know. Okay. I want you to also think about other things that are going to help to keep you okay. So keeping a balance. Yes, you've got online work to do and you should, according to the government, be doing four hours of work every day. But that leaves a huge amount of other time in the day for you to do other things as well. Okay, so make sure you're keeping up with your hobbies and the things that you enjoy doing, keeping that balance between work and play. Okay, it's so important to keep yourselves as mentally healthy as you can. All right, thinking about that, you also need to be helping out at home. Now, I know that lots of you will naturally do that anyway. But just think about the stress that everybody else in your household is under as well. They will have concerns. They will have worries. Um, this situation is a nightmare in so many ways. There will be financial pressures that weren't there before. There will be increased financial pressures that were there before. There will be health concerns. So just helping out at home, doing something without being asked, would be a massive, massive help to your family and the people that you love. So keeping your bedrooms tidy, emptying the dishwasher without fuss, um, deciding you're going to cook a meal for everybody, things like that would mean so much to your families. So try and do a few things like that. The other, the next um, bullet point there says keep it to the here and now. And what I mean by that is don't worry about what's coming next. OK, we're living in a time at the moment where actually we haven't got a clue what's coming next, a lot of us. And that can be deeply distressing. But if you keep your worries and concerns to what you have to do here and now, then it will become manageable. OK, so don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next week. Just think about what have I got to do today? What have I got to get done? What deadlines have I got to meet? What things have I got to achieve? And when you've achieved them, that will help you to feel good. It will help you to feel like you're being useful and it will help you to feel like you're actually achieving things still, which you will be. And it's very easy to lose sight of that during times like this. So don't worry about the fact that you're not going to be in school till February at the earliest. Just worry about today. OK, keep it to the here and now and don't worry about things that you've got absolutely no control over. What you've got control over is your behaviour and the way that you behave and the way that you respond to the situation. So if you keep to the rules, if you do the helping out, if you keep up to date with your schoolwork, you will have done an amazingly fantastic job. And that's all anybody can ask of you. And there's always the chance for you to try something new. You've got time now. You've got time to, to, to do something that you've never tried before. OK, so why not do that? Why not try a different um, activity? Why not try baking? Why not try cooking? Why not try learning a different language? Why not do something completely different? Test your artistic skills. See what you can create. Do something different. Try something new. And if you do that, let us know how it gets, how you get on, because it will be interesting to see. It is really important to realise that this situation will not carry on forever. There is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. The vaccine is being distributed. The increase in numbers of people being vaccinated is getting very, very good. And the good news is starting to filter through. Only yesterday, um, the NHS released information about two new drugs that they were using for um, people suffering with COVID. And it has reduced the death rate by 25% in people who have got COVID. So there is good news on the horizon. There is light at the end of the tunnel and we must never lose sight of that. We will be back to normal at some point. So hold on to that idea. As I've said already, we are still here. And if you need us, please let us know. If you've got concerns with um, classwork, you can't access it or you don't understand what it is you need to do, 
then your class teachers are the best people to contact initially. Okay. If you've got any other general concerns about the way things are, um, if you just want to talk to somebody, then contact your tutor or contact me if you want to. Okay. And very importantly, if you've got any safeguarding concerns, then please contact your tutor or me as you would do if you were in school. Our safeguarding team is still working 24 seven. So if you need us for any reason, you are concerned about your safety or the safety of somebody you know, then please, please let us know. We are here to help. Finally, I want to say to you that at some point soon, we will all be celebrating the fact that this nightmare is over, okay? And as it says at the bottom of this, and I truly believe this, it will be all right in the end. And if it's not all right, then it's not the end. So hold on to the hope, keep doing what you need to do day in, day out, and all will be well, okay? Take care and we'll speak soon.